We will now look at the four key elements of free and accessible education. These elements include, of course, number one, free and accessible education is a process. It's not an end. It's not we've achieved it and you stop. A process goes on forever. It's a never-ending search to find new, better, unique, innovative ways of doing the same old things and particularly responding to diversity. It is about learning how to live with difference and learning how to learn from difference. The different students in our classrooms bring different values, bring different content with them to our classrooms. Learning from this difference, learning from this diversity is what free and accessible education for all should be all about. The second element is free and accessible education is concerned with identification and removal of barriers. If it's accessible, you will have to remove the barriers, all the hindrances, the blockages that we find that prevent students from getting into classrooms and working productively in the classroom have to be dealt with. And so, if we need to guarantee free and accessible education, these hindrances will have to be somehow removed. It involves collecting, collating, and evaluating information from a wide variety of sources in order to plan for educational improvements in policy and practice. So what are our sources? Where do we get this information from? Yes, the students, the teachers, the heads of institutions, parents, the wider society, all members of society should be part of this. We need to learn from them and then implement and change both policy and practices. Changing policy only at the paper level is not going to make the difference. We will have to change what is on paper into reality in the classroom, which is the practices that go on with students for students. Third element, free and accessible education is about the presence, participation, and achievement of all students. Yes, free and accessible. If the student is not present, presence is important. Attendance is key. If you're not physically there, nothing is going to help you develop mentally. If you're physically there, yes, someone can help you develop mentally. Then you need to be participating. You need to be involved in what is happening in the classroom. And achievement, which means successful. You need to be successful. Students need to be successful. Students need to know, yes, they are learning. They are progressing. They are on the way to growth and development. Here, presence is concerned with where children are educated and how reliably and punctually they attend. We've, I've just said that. Being in the classroom is the first step. Getting to the classroom Keeping the student there in the classroom then is the teacher's job. Participation relates to the quality of their experiences whilst they are there and therefore must incorporate the views of the learners themselves. Students will participate when you allow them to think, when you allow them to give their opinions, suggestions, recommendations, ask them what they are interested in, participating and then making sure that in a classroom of 30-some students, all 30 are participating. If 25 are participating, it's not free and accessible education for all. For all means all 30 students in the classroom need to be involved. An achievement is about the outcomes of learning across the curriculum, not merely test or examination results. Tests and examination results really don't say much about student achievement. Student achievement should be measured based on what the student is able to do on his or her own after the teacher has taught. That should be the achievement. Simply passing an exam because you memorize facts. Our system, unfortunately, is based on rote learning by far in our schools and up to post-secondary stage. And so how do we help students think for themselves Think independently, do the higher levels of thinking so that they can be successful in their real lives. 
The fourth element is free and accessible education involves a particular emphasis on those groups of learners who may be at risk of marginalization, exclusion, or underachievement. These are, in our case, these could be our female students, this, this could be students and children from absolutely below the poverty line family groups, these could be children with learning disabilities and our teachers don't know what to do with them. These are the marginalized children and students that we should be worried about. And free and accessible education guarantees that even those students will receive that kind of education. This indicates the moral responsibility to ensure that those groups that are statistically most at risk are carefully monitored and that, where necessary, steps are taken to ensure their presence, participation, and achievement in the educational system. These so-called at-risk students may be really bright, but if a teacher doesn't work with them, if a teacher doesn't work around them, if a teacher doesn't work for them, this is not going to happen. They will continue to remain at risk. Those at-risk students also need to participate and achieve, in other words, be successful.